this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is a video to compare the Razer Basilisk Ultimate and the Rocket Cone XP. The Cone XP can be seen here on the left with its glorious 3D RGB lighting, and in this video I'm going to talk to you about the differences between these two mice, show them off side by side, give you a sample test of the switch differences and sounds later on in the video, and cover off are things like my favorite things about them, features, specs, and all the other glorious things. Now these are two interesting mice for different reasons. Obviously the Basilisk Ultimate is a wireless mouse, a bit more expensive, and it has some other things of interest. They are both ergonomically designed with a left thumb rest, some nice grips, and a mass of buttons. The Razer Basilisk Ultimate has 11 programmable buttons, and it also has some serious specs that include up to 20,000 max DPI, 650 IPS, 50 Gs of acceleration, and more. But the Rocket Cone XP is also very capable, and it has 15 programmable buttons, which you can customize for up to 29 possible actions. Obviously, one highlight is that 3D RGB lighting, where there's 22 LEDs inside the body, which give off some very nice RGB, as you'll see. And it has a really nice setup in terms of the overall aesthetic and comfort of it. They're both comparable in sort of size and shape and the overall ergonomics. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you about them and compare them side by side, because you will see there are some similarities. Now the Basilisk Ultimate is obviously a bit more understated in its RGB lighting, and yet it too has customizable RGB with 14 LEDs inside. It isn't as striking as the Cone XP, as you can see here, which has that sort of translucent shell and shows off some really interesting RGB, but it does have a strip down the side and the mouse wheel as well. Now the Basilisk Ultimate can be purchased with a charging dock that you can see here. It has two little pins on it and a USB port as well, so you can plug in the USB-C hyperspeed dongle and connect that up so you have an extension basically from your PC to that little dock. But when not in use, you can easily dock the mouse onto this little charging dock and then obviously keep the mouse charged up so it doesn't need to be plugged in. And that is obviously a very big highlight of this mouse. One significant difference between them because the Cone XP is wired, whereas the Basilisk Ultimate is obviously wireless. It does have a micro USB charging cable and it is worth noting that you can also get it without the charging dock a bit more affordable that way. And here you can see the sort of standard package with the mouse, the micro USB charging cable, and your dongle and other things. Now the underside of the mouse obviously has some slick PTFE areas. They are fairly small, but it does have some other highlights. You do have the little dongle hidden away inside and you can store it in there when not in use. So that's obviously a very handy thing. Another thing you'll notice is a little resistance wheel on the underside too. And I'll talk to you about that in a minute. This uses 2.4 gigahertz wireless to give you a nice solid connection to your PC. Now, one of the things that's interesting is both mice have optical switches, so it's worth bearing that in mind. And Razer's switches are capable of giving you a really fast actuation with a 0.2 millisecond response captured by your PC as well, so fantastic in that way. Both mice also work with NVIDIA's Reflex technology as well, so you can get access to that. I've done a video separately on what that means, and I'll link to that in the description. As you'll see from the Basilisk Ultimate, as I said, it has 11 programmable buttons. That includes left and right pivot on the mouse wheel, but a number of other buttons on the side, and you see you have the thumb buttons and then other buttons on top. There's also a paddle as well, though, which you can attach to it. I'll show you that in a second. One of the things that's quite interesting is the resistance wheel though on the mouse wheel. So you see there's a tiny little wheel on the underside. When you have it in one direction, you get a lot of noise and feedback from the mouse wheel and you can adjust that. So you can just roll this little resistance wheel in one direction on the other and it'll either give you less resistance or more. And when you put it basically to the minimum amount, it really spins quite easily. Nowhere near as fast as the G502 from Logitech, which basically span completely freely. But it is interesting that you can adjust that resistance. And it's a nice little highlight to the mouse. This has a lot of different features that are hidden away. Another one, for example, is this little paddle that you can use. A tiny little paddle that goes on the front. 
And as standard, this adjusts the sensitivity of the mouse. So it's a little clutch that you can basically hold down with your thumb to adjust your sensitivity on the fly. Think of it like a sniper button, for example, that you might have seen on other mice, where you can basically just drop into a lower DPI with ease. It's a really satisfying setup. Very unusual to have like a clutch paddle setup rather than a mouse button. And so it gives an interesting feedback when you're using it. The design of it is also very nice and it fits nicely in the hand thanks to that wonderful ergonomics, slightly angry look and feel to it. Now, as standard, you also get a little extension dock. This is basically so you can put it on your desk closer to the mouse and plug the cable in and have the dongle near to the mouse. So basically you can disconnect this and easily plug the cable into your mouse when you need to charge it up. As I said, you can purchase it with a dock and that dock setup is worth getting in my mind. It's a little bit fiddly to dock, but when you do do it, obviously that charges the mouse up nice and easily. So next time you go to use it, it's just ready to go and you don't need to plug it in very often. And during my testing, I found I didn't need to plug it in thanks to that system. So it is a good setup and very handy. It is, however, micro USB, which I know some people will be frustrated with. Now, you also get the wonder of the 4D mouse wheel. On both of these mice, you have left and right pivot on the mouse wheel here. So you can see that you can just tilt it over to the side. That counts as one of the button presses. The buttons are the difference between these two because as I said already, the Basilisk Ultimate, and as you'll see from the shots, only has 11 buttons compared to the 15 on the Rocket. And that's what makes the Rocket Cone XP stand out in my mind, is not only does it have 15 buttons, but you can also program them with up to 29 possible settings and the reason for that is on the left hand side on the thumb rest at the bottom there's a button specifically there designed for easy shift now easy shift is a technology from rocket where basically you can press and hold that button and then you can access a secondary layer of actions on all the other buttons on the mouse so that means you have a lot of possible actions that you can program in including macros and other things but you can see you have four thumb buttons as standard along the side plus those two extra buttons on the front as well which are easily accessible with your index finger you'll see both mice have a textured grip to them very different setup in terms of the grip because you basically have some lines on the cone xp and a rubberized finish on the Basilisk Ultimate. On the underside, you'll notice there's a bit more in terms of the PTFE areas on the Cone XP. However, I found both of mice flick around really easily on the desk and they're both comparable in their movement on your mouse mat, for example. So I wouldn't necessarily say there's a big difference between them. But as you can see side by side, they're quite similar looking in terms of the sort of overall shape and ergonomics and the fit in the hand. I do feel like there's a bit more space where your thumb goes on the Cone XP, which is either a good or bad thing, depending on the size of your hand. But I feel, for example, that you have to lift your thumb up a bit more off the thumb rest to reach the very top thumb buttons on the Cone XP, which could be one small downside to the design. They're both quite striking, the overall finish. I definitely prefer the look and feel of the Cone XP, but there's a lot to be said for both of them. They're both wonderfully set up. Now, the other reason to compare them is they are also very similar in weight in a world where a lot of other mice have gone for ultra lightweight designs both of these are a bit more hefty which means that they sit at around 100 gram mark you can see the basilisk ultimate is about 108 grams here on my scales and the cone xp is a little touch lighter at around 100 102 grams depending on where you put it on the scales so it is a little bit lighter. Now I will say that I do feel like the Basilisk Ultimate feels like a better build quality when you get out of the box and when you're using it. It feels a bit more solid, a bit more premium, and overall a bit nicer in terms of the feel in the hand. And the Cone XP might feel a bit more hollow. However, I do think that both of them are wonderful. There's a lot going on under the surface that's worth knowing about. As I said, they both have optical switches. So they're both designed to last a lot longer and give you an accurate situation so really fast and swift. Now stick with me as in a second, I'm going to leave a clip so you can just hear what the switches sound like as a comparison between them. But my favourite out of these two is the Cone XP currently, however the Basilisk Ultimate is a brilliant choice if you're looking for a wireless mouse. Thanks for watching.
This has been The Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.